Arithmetic Review, Fractions, Part 1 In the following series of videos, we're going to review the concepts associated with fractions. Let's first start with the basic definitions and terminology. A fraction is a number of the form a over b, where a and b are integers, and b does not equal 0, since division by 0 is undefined. In essence, you can think of a fraction as another way of writing division. For example, the fraction 4 fifths is just another way of writing 4 divided by 5. The fraction bar is pretty much a shorthand way of denoting division. In general, the integer on top of the fraction bar is called the numerator, and the integer underneath the fraction bar is called the denominator. For example, Negative 5 over 3 is a fraction in which negative 5 is a numerator and 3 is a denominator. These types of numbers are also referred to as rational numbers. Now let's talk about the various properties of fractions. If both the numerator a and denominator b are multiplied by the same non-zero integer, the resulting fraction would be equivalent to a over b. For example, Say that I have the fraction negative 5 over 3. If we multiply both numerator and denominator by the integer 4, we would obtain the following fraction, negative 20 over 12. This fraction is equivalent to negative 5 over 3, or negative 5 thirds. In the same manner, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by negative 1, we would obtain the following fraction, 5 over negative 3. The results of these two examples illustrate a couple of important properties that you should keep in mind when dealing with fractions. If both the numerator and denominator have a common factor, then the numerator and denominator can be reduced into an equivalent fraction. For example, if we were to take the fraction 40 over 72, we can rewrite the numerator 40 as 8 times 5. In the same manner, we can rewrite the denominator as 8 times 9. Since both the numerator and denominator have 8 as a common factor, you can cross out or cancel this integer from both numerator and denominator. This process leaves you with an equivalent fraction, in this case, 5 ninths. Fractions of this form are said to be reduced in simplest form. Let's go over another example. Say we had the fraction 16 over 20. There are two ways you can reduce fractions. The first requires you to write the prime factorization of the numerator and denominator. The prime factorization of 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And the prime factorization of 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Now it's just a matter of crossing out or canceling factors that both the numerator and denominator have in common. In this example, both the numerator and denominator have the factor 2 times 2 in common. So we go ahead and cancel them out. Doing that, we are left with the following factors in the numerator and denominator. Since there are no other factors that are common to both the numerator and denominator, we go ahead and simplify the expression, obtaining the equivalent fraction 4 fifths. You can achieve the same result by dividing the numerator and denominator by the factors that are common to both. In this example, 4 is a factor of both 16 and 20. This means that both the numerator and denominator can be divided evenly, without remainder, by 4. Doing this yields the equivalent fraction 4 fifths. So either the prime factorization method or the common factor method can be used to reduce a fraction into an equivalent form. If you can figure out the common factor to both numerator and denominator by just looking at them, then go ahead and divide this common factor to both numerator and denominator. On the other hand, if you're having trouble finding the common factor, then you always have the option of writing the prime factorization and proceed canceling factors in this way. When you're face to face with fractions, always reduce them before doing anything else. The last property I want to go over is the use of negative signs on a fraction. A fraction with a negative sign in either the numerator or denominator can be written with the negative sign in front of the fraction. For example, the fraction negative 5 thirds is equivalent to 5 over negative 3, which is also equivalent to negative 5 thirds. All three fractions are equivalent, regardless of where the negative sign is located. It can be on the numerator, denominator, or in front of the fraction. 
all of these fractions describe the same fraction. A fraction that contains a negative sign in the numerator and denominator, such as negative 5 over negative 3, is equivalent to positive 5 thirds, since a negative divided by a negative equals a positive. Alright, these are the three properties of fractions I want you to be familiar with. The first one was the idea of generating an equivalent fraction by multiplying both numerator and denominator by a non-zero integer. The second property involved reducing a fraction into simplest form by crossing out or canceling a common factor. And lastly, a fraction with a negative sign in front is equivalent to a fraction that contains a negative sign in either the numerator or denominator. These properties are going to be important when we start reviewing operations with fractions. In part 2 of this video series, we will review how to add and subtract fractions.